Try typing the name George Soros into Google, and these are the kind of headlines you might get. The most dangerous man in America. The billionaire who broke the Bank of England. Soros backed. Soros linked. Soros funded. Soros, Soros, Soros. George Soros is a, a divisive figure that uh, is going to uh, always attract the attention for many reasons. And um, um, I think that is uh, both because of his business activities, but also because of his involvement in supporting a number of causes in many countries. So definitely, I think he is um, loathed by, by many. The fact that, he's, that he worked in finance, the fact that he's Jewish, you know, that he's all controlling, or he's an outsider, or he's a speculator, or he's trying to undermine the nation. He's a destruction to our civilization and a clear and present danger to our country. He has all of these traits that make him a really attractive candidate as the target of conspiracy theories. So many theories, so little truth. So here are the facts. George Soros was born in 1930s Hungary to a Jewish family avoiding deportation to a Nazi concentration camp by securing false ID and concealing his background. He later moved to London, where he studied economics, then New York, where he made millions, then billions, speculating on international markets, before turning his hand to philanthropy. In 1993, he launched his Open Society Foundations, which vows to build vibrant and inclusive democracies. It's now one of the largest philanthropic organizations in the world. So how has someone who's given so much time and money become the target of countless conspiracy theories? The answer lies in the land of his birth, Hungary, where Prime Minister Viktor Orban needed an enemy. So in 2015, George Soros published this think piece where he calls for a plan on how to handle the refugee crisis. Viktor Orban takes this little essay and turns it into something very different, kind of like a, a giant master plan, the Soros plan, a plan to replace the European population with the immigrants. And they use this for political campaigning and then there's, there's even like political posters they created where they show George Soros and a bunch of allies in a photo montage cutting through a wire fence. There was a, uh, a campaign that was based on, based on a series of, of billboards that um, actually uh, shown uh, George Soros with uh, devilish eyes and with a slogan that, that said, let's not have uh, Soros have the last laugh. All the messages that you saw on billboards that were coming from the Prime Minister and his staff were republished and promoted in, in the Hungarian media, in the pro-government media. The Prime Minister needed an enemy and of course they needed someone from abroad, someone who would occupy Hungary, someone with foreign interests, someone related with international financial conspiracies. So they hired this, um, uh, these two uh, consultants these two spin doctors, and um, they have actually helped um, help him create the, the so-called Soros plan. Those masters of spin were two Jewish Americans, Arthur Finkelstein and George Birnbaum. Finkelstein had made a name for himself, securing victory for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in 1996. Netanyahu repaid the favor with an introduction to Viktor Orban. The pair went on to devise one of the most destructive smear campaigns of the 21st century, branding George Soros the billionaire bogeyman. Arthur Finkelstein developed a specific uh, political uh, philosophy, uh, an idea that we call Finkelthink. His politics was about the vilification of the political enemy. Finkelstein's idea was, what if we lift the curtain and behind the curtain of these international elites, all of a sudden, there's this one figure. You don't fight against the Nazis, you fight against Adolf Hitler. You don't fight against Al-Qaeda, you fight against Osama bin Laden, right? And so George Soros could become the face of the enemy. Nekünk nem a vérszegény ellenzéki pártocskákkal kell megküzdenünk, 
hanem egy birodalommal szervezett nemzetközi hálózattal, amit Soros György neve foglal össze, és ő testesít meg. George Soros wasn't just an enemy for Viktor Orbán. What Finkelstein and Birnbaum formulated was a blueprint ripe for adoption by right-wing populist leaders around the world. Regardless of a country's specific socio-political context, Soros met the brief, a symbol of opaque global capitalism with a philanthropic front that tapped into deeply rooted anti-Semitic tropes. He is still, for many uh, governments in the world, the scapegoat, simply because, uh, so to speak, he ticks all the boxes. In Turkey, Erdogan, he uh, at some point in time referred to Soros as being the man who is going to destroy his country. We have in Italy Matteo Salvini, who many times spoke about the support that George Soros gave to organizations supporting migrants. No, Soros is one of those who would like Italy to be a prophet, and Europe is an enormous prophet, because he likes the slaves. Even Nigel Farage from the UK party in Great Britain mentioned Soros in, in his speeches, and he made this direct link between George Soros and the flood of migrants in the Western European world. If you really examine the money this man is spending across the whole of Europe, in America, to push his agenda, which is to get rid of the nation state and to encourage mass migration. So we have it everywhere. Fox News has played a huge role in pushing the idea that Soros was trying to replace the American population with people from abroad, and that Soros was hijacking democracy. But his program, for the past 15 years at least, has been to make the societies he focuses on more dangerous, dirtier, less democratic. In other words, it's a program of destruction aimed at the West. And it, what's interesting, you, you might have thought that it would stop when Trump left office. Actually, the opposite is the case. I think that here in the United States, these conspiracy theories are more potent um, and omnipresent than they were before. So is there an end in sight? There is for Soros himself. Now 93, he's slowly stepping out of the spotlight, handing the reins of his philanthropic foundation to his son, Alex. But as for what he's come to represent, the billionaire bogeyman, the shadowy scapegoat, the puppet master personifying all evils. Now that has taken on a life of its own. I think it's really hard to say what Soros' legacy will be. I went to the last CEU graduation and I was sitting there thinking, gosh, well, after Soros, who were people going to, like, who were they going to attack? And then Alex Soros walked onto the stage and I had this moment of like, oh, him, right, of course. Um, so I, I certainly think that people will try to run the same script. If you think of the uh, Finkelstein and Birnbaum versus Soros <laughs> um, fight, future historians will look back at this fight as like the epitome of like a, a giant, almost global political discussion where liberal politics goes against this new breed of post-liberal or illiberal politics. So it's like a global campaign because it's globalized political uh, warfare now. Thanks for watching. Now hit that like button and leave us a comment to let us know what you think about anything that we covered this week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Does anyone really call it X? Facebook and Instagram for updates from the show. Links are in the description.